In this video, we're going to be taking a look at multiplication patterns. Now the goal for today is to be able to find patterns when multiplying with multiples of 10. And also by knowing the pattern, it will make these types of problems very much easier. So I want you to write down those goals before we move on. Now here's something else you will want to write in your notes. It's the tip of the day for this video. It's important to know that the total amount of zeros in your multiplication problem will always be the total amount of zeros in your answer. I want you to underline after you multiply your basic fact. Okay, so it's really important to know that this is the tip, but it's the tip after you multiply your basic fact that is really, really important to remember. Now what we're going to do is take a look at a pattern that we see. Okay, now if we're taking a look at 3 times 5, I know that 3 times 5 gives me 15. Okay, now if I'm taking a look at 3 times 50, that gives me 150. Okay, 3 times 500 gives me 1,500. Okay, so we know those are the answers there so do you see a pattern we don't have any zeros here we don't have any zeros in either of my factors in this problem we have one zero you can see in the 150 here we don't we have only one zero in my factors okay three times fifty one zero and then one zero for my product two zeros for my 500 factor two zeros for my answer so we need to think about that key tip of the day again and we know that the total amount of zeros in your multiplication problem will always be the total amount of zeros in your answer after you multiply your basic fact. So we can see basic fact is 3 times 5 giving me 15. 3 times 5 is 15 is my basic fact. We add our zero. Okay, so you can see that key tip of the day is definitely here. It's going to be very, very helpful. So what you want to do, you want to multiply your basic fact, identify your basic fact, multiply it, and then add the zeros at the end. Let's take a look at my 7 times 6. So we have 7 times 6 I know is going to give me 42. Okay, 70 times 60. Multiply my 7 times 6 is going to give me 42. Add my two zeros, 4,200. My next one, 700 times 600. 7 times 6 I know gives me 42. Then I add my four zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see that key tip is definitely going to be helpful. You multiply your basic fact, then you add your zeros at the end. Okay, so the pattern, you always add your zeros. However many zeros are in your, within your factors, you add those to your answer after you multiply your basic fact. Now, let's take a look at some of these problems, and I'm going to do two for you, and then we'll do a couple together and so on. Now, we're going to take a look at 20 times 40. So the, what I always want you to do is just write the problem out over, okay, down on your piece of paper, when you're in your math journal, I should say. Okay, so we have 20 times 40. Now what I like to do is completely ignore the zeros. I identify my basic fact. Okay, now my basic fact here is 2 times 4. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 4. I know that's pretty simple. That's 8. Okay, now after I've multiplied my basic fact, I can, can completely ignore these two digits, the 2 and the 4, because I've already worked with them. However, we cannot forget the zeros to put at the end of my product, okay? And we'll just tack those two zeros on the end for an answer of 800. Okay, so 20 times 40 may be a little tricky, but if you multiply the basic fact and tack the zeros on at the end, it can, can be much, much easier. Okay, let's take a look at 400 times 30. First of all, I will write that down. You can just follow along as I do this. You don't need to write this down just yet. 400 times 30. We'll write it out. Make sure everything's nice and neat. So I'm going to identify my basic fact, which is 4 times 3. Now, 4 times 3 is pretty simple. You should know that right off the top of your head. That's going to give me 12. 
So I'll write that down first. Okay, now we can completely ignore the 4 and the 3 now. Okay, we can send them off on our way. However, we could not ignore these zeros. These zeros will get pretty grumpy if we completely ignore them. We don't want that to happen. So we have three zeros in my multiplication problem, three zeros to total. Okay, so that means I just tack those three zeros right on the end of my product. For a grand total of 12,000. Now we're going to do this next one together, but this next one is not even in my list of problems here. What we're going to do, this is this can be a little bit of a tricky one here. So we're going to multiply 40 times 50. So let's get out your math journal and we'll write this down. 40 times 50. Okay, I'm going to show you how this one can be a little tricky. Okay, remember that key tip. You tack your zeros on at the end after you've multiplied your basic fact. So the basic fact is really, really important to do first. Okay, so first thing we will do is multiply our basic fact 4 times 5. And we know 4 times 5 is pretty simple. That's going to give us 20. Now, if we don't know 4 times 5, we need to practice our basic facts. You should just know that right off the top of your head without having to do anything, any tricks with your fingers or anything like that. 4 times 5, we know it's 20 right away. Okay, so we've multiplied our basic fact. We can completely get rid of R and 4 and 5 and just ignore them for right now. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is add our two zeros on at the end. Okay, now remember the key tip. The number of zeros in your multiplication problem will always equal the number of zeros in your answer. Okay, now this doesn't quite do that. But remember, after you multiply the basic fact, our basic fact equal, equaled 20, which had a zero in it. So we wrote our, the product of our basic fact right here, and then we tacked our two zeros on at the end still. Okay, so even though your basic fact may end in a zero, you still need to tack on the zeros that are part of your factors. Okay, we're going to do one more together, and let's do 600 times 100. We'll write that out, 600 times 100. Get rid of this here. Okay, first thing we do, we're going to underline our basic fact, 6 times 1. Okay, that's what we want to do first. We want to identify that. The best way to identify that is by underlining the basic fact. 6 times 1, very, very simple, is 6. Anytime you multiply any number times 1, it's always that number. Okay, so 6. Now, we've, we're finished with our basic fact. Remember our key tip, the number of zeros in your multiplication problem need to equal the number of zeros in your answer after you multiply your basic fact. We've multiplied our basic fact. We could ignore our 1 and our 6. Now we need to count our zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, it's the total amount of zeros. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, Okay, for a grand total of 60,000. Now I want you to complete these two problems all by yourself. Okay, so I have them written out for you 80 times 70, and then finally 50 times 600. So complete these problems all by yourself, and while you're doing that, you'll need to pause the video. When you're finished, you can press play, and I'll have the answers for you. So I want you to pause the video now. Okay, so for the first one, we have 80 times 70. Multiply 8 times 7 first. That gives me 56. And then we tacked our two zeros on at the end for 5,600. Now, something I did not do was underline my basic fact first. That is really, really important. I apologize for, for that. 8 times 7, 56, and then tack your two zeros on the end. Now, for the next one, I underline my basic fact. 5 times 6 is going to give me 30. So I multiply my basic fact. Now it's time to tack on my zeros. I can just ignore my basic fact. One, two, three zeros at the end. One, two, three zeros at the end for 30,000. Now some of you may have written 3,000 down. Remember, you multiply that basic fact first, 5 and 6. That gave you 30. 
okay, but I still had three zeros attack on at the end for 30,000. Okay, so that concludes our video. Please let me know if you have any questions about this concept. And once again, if you do not know your basic facts, it is very, very important in fifth grade that you know them right off the top of your head very, very quickly. Okay, so please let me know if you have any questions about this concept.